Hello everybody, Anthony is here. Today I want to show how to input an image into a visual language model inside ConfUI, let it recognize the image, generate a prompt, then use depth processing and create a new image on top. It all can be automated and can be a quite powerful tool. Now everyone is familiar with LLMs, the large language models. The original ChatGPT was only inputting written word. Now ChatGPT became a multi-model large language model or MLLM, as well as Gemini, Grok, and many other big models out on the market, consumer huge models. But there are also VLNs, visual language models. And in this video, I'll talk about using LLMs and VLMs inside ConfUI. It is quite powerful to understand that you can actually have your own LLM and VLM just locally on your computer, running without internet connection. This is something I actually didn't know about before. If you are new to ConfUI, I have an introduction to ConfUI and diffusion models available for free on my Patreon. And the networks I'm going to show here are also published on my Patreon. Check it out. The links are in the description. We need to go to alllama.com to install the Llama Studio. Now let's click download. It's a fairly big file, 700 megabytes. However, most of the models there will be even heavier. And double click on the installation file and it gives you this option to install. And I have this option, this window appears. So I have to copy, copy this. Go to command prompt, click on that. Control V, run this command. You can see here it's trying to pull a lot more files and I'll have to wait a little bit, a little while until it downloads everything it needs. Now everything is downloaded and installed. I go back, click on Alama icon at the bottom and then click finish. Now, if I check the control panel at, at the bottom right, you will see the Llama running. If I click on it, there is not much we can change or anything like that. We just need to have it running along with ConfUI to make it work. I'm inside ConfUI. I want to go search for some VLM nodes, custom nodes manager, and I will type in VLM and we'll get a lot of different options. However, a lot of these VLM packs, even though they're great and really big, some of them haven't been updated to the newest ConfUI and ConfUI in the latest versions that switched from Python 3.11 to Python 3.12, God knows why. And now a lot of these packages don't work. And I will show the one I used, the one that, which works. We need ConfUI Olama Describer and ConfUI Layer Style. This is not for LLMs, but it will be very useful down the line. Let me go click on them and run it install. And then I have to restart my ConfUI. Now, if I double click and go look for Olama, I have few nodes available. I have this text describer. I will start with that. The important thing to see here is this model, right? We are starting with a selection of models. You can see the size of them and the name. They are not pre-installed. Every time you pick a model here, it will go and start downloading it. It will download it on a system drive and it will put it into your user's folder. You can specify a different folder. It is available if you click on the llama icon a couple of times and then go into the settings you can change the folder to download the models unfortunately the way the models downloaded they don't have the name so i've downloaded here in this case one model and it doesn't have the name of that model so it is impossible to know which model is currently downloaded it's quite a big drawback of this workflow you never know which ones are already there, you kind of have to basically make a note on which one you're using. It can be quite puzzling to figure out which model you want to use because of different sizes, different producers of them. It's tricky. I've tried a bunch. Also, in this case, we are downloading a LLM model. It doesn't, it's not compatible with visual language models. So this model is only going to produce a text. I cannot use this model the LLM model to describe an image that I'm going to input into this workflow. I personally found after trying some of these models, if tiny ones like 350 megabytes, a bit bigger ones, one gigabyte and five gigs, I didn't go over five gigs because then it starts to occupy too much VRAM. I found that 300 megabyte models are honestly basically useless. They're very dumb dumber than chat GPT-3, then one gigabyte models are okay, but really not great. And 4.7 gigabyte models, basically that's the best trade-off between quality and size. Let me pick the dumb model, the 350 megabyte one with only 500 million parameters. I want this to be 
in a text preview, I'll go preview screen text, preview text note, one of them, one of this, and let's see if I can run this. So what it's going to do, it's going to download the model. I generally give a good task to that. I often leave the first field blank, it's not really useful. I would say describe a gray box, control enter to run it, and it created an answer. To be honest, not that bad for 500 million parameter model. And in this particular field, this is our prompt field to generate the text. This later can be used for the prompt to generate the image. Go for VLMs, for visual language models, and let's go Llama image describe. Now you can see we have the image input. It will read the image and listen to instructions and output a prompt. I've created this real quick setup. I have a load image of a sketch I did. Then it's picking up this particular model, Q4, Lava Q4, which I've tried other models. I think this is the best in terms of quality of the output. Then I have these two instructions, don't, not to use quotation marks, because sometimes it introduce them all the time, which is annoying. Then I have this create prompt for photoreal image generation, blah, 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 in that setting. And it creates that prompt, create a photo. You can read it if you want. It still created quotation marks, a little bit annoying why. I can try it also to copy this down there so it doesn't make the quotation marks that should help to let us do that. And that did actually help. I found that generally this second prompt field is the most helpful. Quotation marks are not that big of a deal end of the day, but I found them to be a little bit annoying. It is fun to try other models. They will sometimes show their thinking process. It is not great because it actually will go and write, I'm thinking what, how to answer to read this instructions and it will not really create a prompt to create a thinking text which is not great to pass down to flux or sdxl image model there are a few important things to take note first of all the most important is about keeping the model alive minus one means that this model is always live and kept in memory i normally keep it at zero it means that it will create the prompt and then it will unload the model from the memory if you are running it with SDXL and you have enough VRAM, like 16 gigs of VRAM, 24 gigs of VRAM, you can keep this in memory along with SDXL. It shaves a few seconds of one generation. However, with Flux, I found that I couldn't just run it on 24 gigs of VRAM. I had to unload VLM model every time because otherwise it would get stuck and wouldn't render the actual image that five gig VLM model was taking too much VRAM. Another important, very important consideration is here, maximum amount of tokens. For Flux, we can use 512 tokens. For SDXL 77 is the maximum. You can see it's kind of trying to round up the number here. Then there is a seed number, which is another very important thing to consider. This seed number doesn't change and we have to bring in our own seed generator. I'm using seed randomizer from RG3 pack. I'll click here, randomize each time and connect it to the seed number. And that should give us a new random seed. You can see here down there every time, and that will create a new prompt every time with a new idea. And of course here we can write a particular location, particular scenario we want this person to be in other functionality like repeat penalty and temperature here i didn't really touch that much i don't think it's that particularly useful default values are good enough let's take a look how this setup works in a more complicated workflow i'll start with my load image page node where i go and incrementally pick up images from a gallery of sketches that then goes to the Olama image describer. So every time you know, the new image is picked up by the image describer, and because I have sketches of different girls, I have this basically same prompt, which is applied to different poles in different environment. And so it keeps creating a new prompt, then that is passing down to the prompt for SDXL. You can see here I have my negative prompt. Also I have this image resize node and I'm passing the values from these two values, the width and the height. I have this a bit higher quality resolution there that I am reusing across the workflow. So these two nodes are passing the values 
the integer values to the, well, other integer values for the resizing, because it's also used for depth image as well. I'm using this particular SDXL model, Juggernaut XL1, about six gigabytes in size. That's getting piped to the K sampler. And I have this workflow for depth control net where I'm picking that sketch and I have depth anything that reads through the sketch creates the depth image that later gets passed to apply control net and that's later gets passed to K sampler and it all gets decoded and I get this image and the power of this workflow that I can create out of one sketch, run it overnight with multiple ideas, get like a few thousand images on 10 or 50 sketches I've prepared beforehand. I, it's kind of even more powerful with Flux. I think Flux was more creative creating more variations. Now here we have another pose. For Flux, it's actually the same workflow. I have my load image node. I have my Llama describer here. I have the depth image processing at the top. And then I am just using this Xlab sampler and Flux dev model to run and get my images out. You can find these workflows on my Patreon. Thank you for watching and See you in the next video.